essence of I, I've been involved in peace work, so uh, the essence really is at, at the moment of that encounter with the so-called other. Uh, the, the key is to develop a mode of communication that one is actually really totally empowered to be himself or herself in the process, where one can totally appreciate a different identity, and uh, that can be done if you are not so if you understand where your identity is, but you're not attached to it, so that something can develop out of the conversation. So in that case, for example. Um, in the Philippines, it's a Christian Muslim war, very similar to what's going on in other parts of the world. And uh, in, as part of the peace work, we, I've had a chance to deal with uh, a peace process involving former combatants, including commanders of uh, you know, I mean high-level uh, military commanders. Uh, and if the process is that, that you are really listening, the real listening is so important so that there, there is a possibility for a real communication mm -hmm. and then people are really feeling that they're heard mm -hmm. that there's no automatic reaction to an identity but that that identity is being heard and then together you plunge into the depths of the essence mm -hmm. and when that happens and both sides the, the identity of being fully human is the one that emerges and it was one of the highlights of my work there when uh, this Muslim commander and I, and I, being a Christian, hug each other and call each other brothers. I mean, two different cultures. And uh, it's really possible if one is really, really willing to listen authentically to what the other is bringing and really appreciating it authentically, not in a, in a, in a kind of patronizing way, but really understanding the, the beauty and the value of the other person. You know, the, the interesting thing that I find with the younger generation today, your generation, is that what we had to go through and what we needed to, to arrive at a synthesis is already there for your generation. Uh, to be concrete, um, I started as an activist in the 60s, I mean, you know, the, the so-called famous 60s, all over the world, the you know, as student power, youth power, whatever, a total questioning of all structures of all isms and, and all of this, but it was pretty external. Mm -hmm. And so it was all externally driven. There was no uh, there was no view of the interiority of the person uh, that was doing that. Then the sort of project sort of fizzled away as the structures remained and became more hardened uh, in the struggle. And a lot of people went into the so-called consciousness movement with an intense focus on inner consciousness. But there was a dichotomy between the outer and the inner. Uh, our own work now in the last 10 years is to bring, to bring these two streams together, the social stream the consciousness stream. Uh, I think we're succeeding, at least in our own work in the Philippines, and I'm increasingly seeing this also in other parts of the world. But the exciting thing is that young people know that as, as if that's obvious. <laughs> that is the starting point of your generation, is obvious. So therefore, you can really take up that work to another a much higher level because you already have it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that's the but that's the reality and the phenomenon that I'm encountering. Uh, I was here in Germany, for example. We did this um, work with young people. I mean, your friend Adrian and all the, the group. Uh, when we were preparing for the conference, you know how to design it. It was called design with young people. I felt I was sitting, uh, you know, I was, they were like 20 or 21 or 22 years old. I was felt, I felt like sitting uh, with, with a 50-year-old person <laughs> with a very young face <laughs> on the other side of the table asking very deep questions about things that I never thought when I was their age. But now it's also obvious to me given all the experience. But I guess that's how the, the, the baton of one generation to the next is passed on that is the, the younger generation is for me always spiritually more profound than the older generation why that is is i don't you know one can have thinking a lot about that uh, and many from their different perspectives but that's just a phenomenon otherwise evolution will stop you have to use the base 
and then you create your con, the context for the next generation that comes after you, which is even more sophisticated <laughs> than both our generations. Mm -hmm. God, this is the most difficult interview we've had. <laughs> That's to be censored. <laughs> That's a compliment, right? Yeah, yeah it's a compliment. Yeah. It really made me think. <laughs> but I think uh, it's exciting. I wish you really have a copy of this thing because yeah. uh, all of these things, okay, of these things were implicit. Mm.